my family came to Africa in 1685. And the point I'm making is after more than 300 years, Africa has become part of who I am. I'm an African. Mm. And I don't want to speak in racial terms, but I'm an African. So <laughs> that's my family history. We've been people fighting for freedom all our lives. And our fight was not with black people. Our fight was with the British colonial power. I can give you my family history. That's why I'm writing that screenplay. Mm. That was against British imperialism. Okay, so let me get this straight. You came to African land, used African resources, enslaved African people for your benefit. Okay? You fought the British to institute Dutch nationalism. I'm not going to call it Afrikaner nationalism because Afrikaners are people of color. So you fought the British and then lost, somehow reached an agreement and then got to install Dutch nationalism and further oppressed Africans. So from the time that the Dutch arrived here and the British arrived here, their only focus was on enriching themselves, those who came before them and those coming after them who look and sound like them. But you want to be called African. Now, apart from the fact that you will never be African and the only way you can be classified as African is via a document, you aren't European either. Because there was no assimilation with anything African. And you forfeited almost everything European. The only heritage you have is that fight that you speak about, which is being a settler. That's the only identity you have and the only one you can assimilate with. Because what kind of African looks at colonialism as a positive thing? What kind of African looks at statues of these slave owners and oppressors and sees themselves in that? What kind of African chooses the West and whiteness every single time over the real Africans that are right next to them? Take your European abandonment issues up somewhere else.